830 and I will call this meeting of the Sayre County Zoning Committee to order at 830. Uh, roll call, please. Ron Buckholtz, absent. Stacy Hessel. Here. Tweet Schumann. Here. Kay Wilson. Here. Michael Maestri. Here. John Righeimer. Here. Thank you. Please stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I will read the statement of committee and hearing procedure. The full statement of committee and hearing procedure document included directions of individuals wishing to speak at the public hearing to be conducted at the zoning committee meeting are available in the front of this room next to the agenda for today's meeting. The statement of committee and hearing procedure document is hereby incorporated into the record for this committee meeting. Any public hearing conducted at today's committee meeting has been published as a class two notice in the accordance with chapter 985 of the Wisconsin statute in the Sayre County Record and Sayre County Gazette and posted. I'm looking for a motion uh, to approve the September 15 meeting minutes. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? All right. Any all right. opposed? Okay, public comments. Uh, please note public comment time is intended for the general public, uh, not comments related to specific applications before the committee. Each agenda item required requiring a public hearing will have its public hearing conducted just prior to the application being considered by this committee. If you wish to speak on a specific agenda item, we encourage you to hold your comments until that specific public hearing Comments should be directed to the committee as a whole and should not be directed to individual committee members or staff. Reminder also, you just have three minutes. Um, and please uh, speak up if you're using the microphone in the front. And a reminder the to the committee members to use your microphones as well. Um, I, I was trying to read what you had. Oh, no, that's that's nice. Okay. Okay. Um, so for, for public comment, um, so we do have a specific agenda item to discuss the multi-dwelling development. So if your public comments are related to the multi-dwelling development, um, this is a little bit different of a process, but I'd like to go through some bullet points on that first and then gain some audience participation specifically on the multi-dwelling. If you have other public comments not related to that, uh, this would be your opportunity to speak. And the one sheet I have here is for Linda Zilmer. Linda Zilmer, resident of the village of Birchwood, property owner and taxpayer in the town of Edgewater in Sawyer County. Um, I sent two emails to the zoning committee this morning. Uh, the first one was a forward of uh, public comment I had submitted to the Tourist Rooming House Ad Hoc Committee and it related to uh, the zoning and the public health aspects of ordinance changes and a process or a framework that I would ask uh, the committee to consider. And in the email forward, I also thought that um, with Zoning Board of Appeal and Zoning Committee members attending training, upcoming training, it's a, a good way to get a foundation and understanding of the state statutes, uh, the case law, and the zoning ordinance, and how it will help you uh, develop ordinances and then act in your role as a zoning committee in administering them. The second email I had is a list of um, seven items, and I'll try and get through some of them now. Uh, one has to do with uh, before the, the county board adopts the uh, 2024 budget is to take a look at the uh, county fee schedule, as it is not clear whether it's $750 or $150 to uh, look at appeals of administrative decisions and zoning committee decisions. And I believe $750 is too high for an administrative uh, appeal, um, administrative decision appeal. Uh, the second was a reference to uh, encouraging you to look over the um, uh, the email about zoning ordinances uh, for Sawyer County. 
Uh, third item was that the Sawyer County Board of Appeals bylaws and rules may have last been updated in 1995, and that was identified as in a need some years ago. So again, as part of this process, uh, that could be done. Uh, zoning consist decisions consistent with comprehensive plans is important. I believe staff reports should accurately reflect an interpretation of comprehensive plans. And right now, um, the Wisconsin Association of Campground Owners has filed a suit against Washburn County regarding them not having a plan. So I mean, this may be the first case on that. Uh, the, the findings of fact and conclusions of law uh, sheet that this committee uses um, in their decision making, I believe also would require an upgrade to match your zoning ordinance and wet zone, uh, shoreland wetland zoning ordinance. And the calendar for due date that you will set for 2024 might include uh, using April as an orientation. And Thank you, Ms. Silma. Your time is up. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Douglas Kurtzweil. Douglas Kurtzweil, 11055W Arrow Road, Hayward, Wisconsin. Uh, zoning is important. And one of the responsibilities of zoning is to make certain that they protect the health, safety, and welfare of our neighborhoods and communities and the people who live and work in them. And some people think zoning is really complicated, but if you break it down a little bit, it's not. It's basically two things. One is dealing with physical things, uh, dimensional uh, and environmental, lot sizes, building sizes, setbacks uh, from water and from sidelines, back lines. Um, <clears throat> septic situations, numerical. The other, the other aspect is more protecting the social environment. And that has to do with uh, allowable uses. And we have zone districts set up and one size does not fit all of these zone districts. Five acres for a, a use permit to build on forest land, five acres for agricultural, uh, 20,000 acres for unsewered residential lots. And then the residential class is broken down. We, we basically have three zone districts, R1, which is most restrictive, RR2, which is most permissive, and RR1, which is in between. Uh, RR1 currently allows for relatively innocuous, low traffic, uh, home office, home-based uh, type of operations. And I think when a person commingles the spatial dimensional aspects of zoning regs with the use regs, uh, you sometimes can get lost in the weeds a little bit. But uh, zoning is very important. It's vitally important that we protect what we have here and recognize that sometimes some people uh, can't get what they want and they may have to uh, subjugate some of their desires to the needs of having stable, uh, peaceful residential neighborhoods. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next sheet I have here is for uh, a Sutton um, to speak on multi-dwelling. Did you want to hold those until later? Okay. Um, any other public comments at this point? Anyone else online? Uh, seeing none, we would be moving on and I would like to make a recommendation to the committee that we would move agenda item number five, uh, which is the ordinance amendment process to the front of the uh, agenda before rezone applications would be heard. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, approved. Perfect. Um, so this multi-dwelling development situation has been, I'll say, very, very difficult for me to administer as the zoning administrator. There's some ambiguity across the ordinance 
Um, and the current version of it really just doesn't work well with trying to administer it properly. Uh, I do have the current ordinance language that's over on the table there. And I, I kind of want to go through what I see as kind of the four main bullet points of the current ordinance and why changes need to occur one way or the other. Uh, the first is the actual aspect of multi-dwelling development. Now, per definition of the ordinance, multi-dwelling development is development regardless of the form of ownership consisting of three or more dwelling units. This is for a condominium, resort, hotel, motel, or other units structured intended for residential, long-term, or short-term rental, all of which to be included on the same lot. That is the current ordinance definition. Um, and then we get into what zone districts those are permitted in through a conditional use permit process. One of the, the tough things that I've struggled with this ordinance is that within the RR1, Residential Recreational 1 Zone District, and the RR2, Residential Recreational 2 Zone District, through a conditional use permit process, multi-dwelling development is allowed. Again, conditional use permit process would be town approval, zoning committee approval, and you could put certain conditions on there. Nowhere in the current ordinance does it specify, though, as to what type of dimensional requirements do you need for that lot to have additional dwelling units. Uh, so my my struggles with trying to draft changes to, you know, correctly and properly administer the ordinance. Um, you know, we, we sent draft versions out last fall, earlier this spring, and, you know, the towns were, you, you know, unanimously uh, in denial of those. So that is kind of why I've called the town officials here today and, and other members of the public to, to try to work through what we want to see in Sawyer County moving forward. And again, the, the first bullet point I have is you know, should multi-dwelling development be allowed uh, and into what zone districts? The one thing I'll caution with that is that it currently is in ordinance form, but it has some uh, cross-conflicting aspects within the ordinance because it's allowed through conditional use permit. But then if you look at the definition for a lot, uh, a lot is a parcel of land occupied or capable of being occupied by one building or one dwelling unit. So multi-dwelling development is allowed through conditional use permit, but yet our definition of a lot says you're only allowed one dwelling unit per lot. So right there, there's a, there's a conflict uh, that needs to be cleaned up one way or the other. Either you want to see uh, an aspect and an avenue to have resorts and multi-dwelling development, or you, or you don't want to have multi-dwelling development. Um, and I guess that's where I would probably open up the first round of, of questioning too, is, is should multi-dwelling development be allowed in what the current ordinance has is RR1 and RR2 zone districts. And I guess I would just open it up for, for comments from those town officials because I, I need direction from you to help me craft and draft an ordinance to eventually then send back out and, and get amended. If you would like to address the questions Jay's asking, if you could come up to the podium so the people online can hear you. We encourage each township. We'd like the input from each township. If you could just state your name and which township you're representing, that would be great. My name is Jerry Sutton. I'm representing Bass Lake. Um, I'm against the multi-dwelling ordinance on one area or one plot of land. And the reason being is because several things take place in doing so. One, you have the uh, groundwater that has to be utilized. Then there has to be septic. When you're talking about a lake, you're talking about impervious surface. That increases twofold. In doing so, you're going to be ending up damaging the environment already more than it has been. The lakes are being stressed as it is. And in doing so, this would incur ecological and improper ecosystem management. In doing so, you would damage the environment to irreparable harm and irreparable harm. That's why I'm against, or the Bass Lake is against, these 
multi-dwelling development on one plot of land. There are several lands around the lakes where you could do this. However, the reason the original statement was set up for one dwelling on one plot of land is because these dwellings are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Your impervious surface is being damaging to the lakes. The DNR states that 12% of your impervious surface is where the threshold is for damaging the lakes. Our governor has decided to increase that to 30%. Now, where's the balance? As a zoning committee, this is where the decisions are made to help the environment or destroy it. It is up to you. Thank you. Thank you. So also I would request if you are, um, you know, after today's meeting, if your township wants to send us a letter from each township, that would be uh, encouraged as well. So we know that it's the whole town board, uh, not just uh, one person. So. Yeah. And I mean, uh, Bond, you know, brings up a, a good argument. And I, I guess one thing I would counter, because people are always going to try to potentially find a route around. Um, that's just what nature of people is. Um, so you could still, you know, on a larger plot of land, further subdivide that into four separate parcels. And, and that's one of the aspects why I thought multi-dwelling development was first crafted is instead of chopping it into four separate lots and building separate dwellings on each of those lots, the multi-dwelling development would be more of a clustered development and that each dwelling unit would still need to meet the dimensional requirements for that zone district, be it in the RR1 or RR2 zone district, you would still need 100 feet of width, and that would be as a 100 feet of width of frontage if it was on shoreline, and 200 feet of depth, which is 20,000 square feet. That is the zone district requirement to make a new lot in either the RR1 or RR2 zone district. So if multi-dwelling isn't allowed and you don't want to see, you know, three dwelling units on a lot that has 300 feet and 200 feet of depth and 60,000 square feet of land area. There are still other provisions that allow that individual to split that into three separate legal lots through a certified survey map process. So that's where the aspects of, you know, impervious surfaces would still be on the 60,000 square feet versus the 20,000 square feet. Um, you at that point with multi-dwelling development could potentially share well, septic, other utility services. And from my recollection, that's why multi-dwelling was really kind of even first proposed, not let alone the resorts, but more of that cluster development. You still have to have the land area for the dwelling unit, but now you can potentially share common utilities, well, septic, et cetera. Uh, again, I I don't have a dog in this fight. I, I really don't. I, I just need direction as to which way to draft an ordinance and, and properly amend it. So um, is there anyone else that would like to speak on, on that first kind of bullet point as just multi-dwelling development uh, alone? I, I do have several others and I'll just kind of um, earmark them here. You know, one of the aspects of multi-dwelling development per that ordinance language uh, states for three or more dwelling units because you're always allowed one dwelling unit. Multi-dwelling development as per the current ordinance allows for three or more dwelling units, but right now there is no avenue for two dwelling units. You could have 40 acres in the woods and you want to have a, a family compound that has two cabins. Right now the ordinance would say, nope, you got to split the lot. You got to split that 40 acre up and you can have one house on this lot, one house on that lot. Uh, and to me, that's never made sense. But if we don't want to allow that, that's that's what we're here today. Uh, other bullet point is is definition of a resort and wanting to get a a, a better definition of what a, a true resort is. Uh, and then also to the aspects of can you have a two unit resort? Because multi-dwelling development states that it's for three or more dwelling units. Uh, multi-dwelling development includes resorts. So is it possible to even have a two unit resort? Because one of the things we, we start looking at is if we go down this road and not allowing multi-dwelling development, you are in essence shutting off creations of new resorts in, in the future. Um, so I just want to kind of make that mention um, and then we'll we'll hear from Don. Yep. 
Yes, my name is Donald Stover, and I'm a supervisor with the Town of Round Lake. We are against multi-unit developments. Aside from the septic issues and the environmental issues and the impacts on the, on the land, there's also overcrowding on our lakes. We have that now. We cannot do anything to increase that because we're having shoreline erosion issues. We're having violation after violation, boating regulations, um, near miss accidents, and putting more people in these areas is not conducive to a safe environment or a healthy environment. Thank you. Thank you. We have Steve online. Yeah, Steve, did you have some comments you'd like to make? I think you have 10 minutes. Oh. Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, I'll lower my hand. Steve Bining, Town of Draper, Supervisor. Um, our, our town doesn't probably doesn't feel the need for an additional letter since we stated unanimously that the multi-family developments on RR1 and RR2 do not fit our comprehensive plan. So when we talk about long-term, what we want in Sawyer County, what makes us special? Is it densely populated shoreline? Is it filling in wetlands? Or is it hunting and fishing in our natural wildlife? So when you think about what we're gonna leave for our children and grandchildren, each piece of, of shoreline or, or sensitive or delicate areas takes that away forever. And I guess I, now that I've heard some comments, I, I guess I'd just like to add from a real estate perspective, you start trying to split properties that have shared wells and shared septic, you're gonna have a nightmare trying to close those deals. So th this is where zoning has a chance to really take the lead and make cleaner real estate transactions from that perspective as well. So when, when we start looking out 10, 20, 30, 40, long after we're gone, we have a real gift here in, in trying to keep Sawyer County special and setting an example to other areas and how we can preserve our sensitive areas for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else for the first kind of bullet point as to just the, the allowance of, of multi-dwelling development? Um, you know, it, it will be something that, you know, if, if we move forward and, and really kind of strike out multi-dwelling development from the ordinance, or at least kind of craft it in such a way that you're still only allowed one dwelling unit per lot, that there would be quite a few non-conformities that are going to be created. Non-conformities being that it was something that was currently or was allowed by ordinance and now would not be allowed by ordinance. Um, and really all of our existing resorts would become non-conforming. Those resorts that are multiple dwelling units on one lot. Uh, I mean, you, you look around our lake settings, I mean, this community was built on resorts. Now that trend has gone, you know, to the route of condos, but we do see, you know, a couple new resorts wanting to pop up. And that's really kind of what stemmed uh, this potential ordinance, ordinance creation or ordinance uh, amendment. Um, but anyone else that, yeah, go ahead. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but right now we're just hearing from townships, correct? It's all, yeah, unfortunate. Okay. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. So, uh, Linda Zilmer, uh, I originally on the plan planning committee and plan commission for the town of Edgewater and served as chair. I think that the process is getting a little bit muddled here. The public was asked for one question, just multi-use alone. As I understand the people who spoke, a lot of it has to do with Lakeshore, which is the shoreland provision. And um, and then further complicating as people spoke, then you went on to other things like resorts. So it, maybe this process is getting muddled, but I think the separate question is, but considering septics is, would multi-dwelling be appropriate outside of the shoreland? Because that could also address housing. And maybe that gets asked as a separate question. Thank you. And yeah, that's certainly one thing to consider is that, you know, if, if we don't want to necessarily see multi-dwelling development on Lakeshore, I mean, there are routes that we can craft ordinances that would, you know, 
not have it available for shoreline zone properties, which would be 1,000 feet from a lake, 300 feet from a river or stream, but then still potentially allow multi-dwelling development on non-shoreland zone properties. That is something that we would have the ability to craft ordinances to showcase. Yes, thank you. With respect to the shoreland zoning component of this, um, a, a rezone or an amendment to the shoreland code does not require town approval, correct? I'm correct. Not, okay, so I think that's an important distinction for everyone. Um, you know, certainly our townships that if the county were to make a change to the Shoreland Code with respect to multi-dwelling multi developments, resorts, et cetera, the county would not need town approval. That's a significant point. Correct, but there would still be some crossover in which if per the zone district still required a cup, whether it was shoreline or not, mm -hmm. you would still be applying both ordinance provisions. It does the, does, does our zoning code always require town approval for every cup, including in shoreline? As far as I'm aware, yeah, conditional use permits would require town approval. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just think that's, it's important for everyone to consider. Like, I think this is fantastic that there is a, you know, a, a, a dialogue. Um, but I, again, I just wanted to point that out because it is, I think it is an important consideration when we're looking at all the elements. Right. And I know in the past, it's been an issue with the, the county of, you know, the towns not approving and then the county approving. And so we're trying to respect all the townships. That's why we've asked them here. Um, so it, there is a, a respect level trying to occur here and trying to understand the two versus three. So that since I've been on zoning, that's been the issue is, can we discuss the two? Can we add the two in there somewhere so that it's not going from one to three or more? Um, I think be, respecting the time that everybody has and respecting the fact that we do want to make sure going forward that um, we're not erring, erring on the side of history. Um, that's what I would like to see dove into more, not shoreline versus non-shoreline, but the two versus three or more. Mm -hmm. Jay or Stacey, you want to about this so that oh. Sure. Uh, to my right here is Rebecca Roker. She's our legal counsel, our legal representative. Thank you for bringing that up. And if you want to come to the podium, that would be great. Uh, Benjamin Kurtzwell. Um, I would just advise this talk about the shoreland revision going around the towns, it may be legal, but it's bad policy and bad politics. Um, I think that this, this goes through the towns for a reason. And being that last time it was 15-0, and if you want to send it out to the towns again, if it gets defeated again, if the county wants to go around the towns and do a shoreland revision, I think that would be very bad for the county overall. And I imagine there's going to be a lot of angry people uh, that their voice was not heard. So I would advise against that. And I know that doesn't mean much, my advice, but I think that's bad policy and shouldn't really be broached at this time. Thank you. Thank you. So again, that's why we wanted the town here, the towns here, so that we could hear from them because it was our understanding that a lot of the opinions were returned um, that didn't understand what we were asking. So Face-to-face -face is always better than letters, I think, but I'm old. So. Yeah, so from, you know, the, the first, you know, attempt to, you know, make some amendments and what we're hearing here today, it sounds like the majority, um, if not all, are not in favor of, you know, kind of that, that multi-dwelling development aspects. Um, now, whether or not that's something that, we potentially entertain it on non shoreland versus shoreland. I guess that would be the follow up question I would have for the towns. Is it, is it more of a resource protection aspect? Because when you look at some of the other multi dwelling development aspects, what if someone wants to put up uh, an apartment complex in the town of Hayward off water, not going to be able to potentially happen now because those are multiple dwelling units on one lot. 
Uh, so those are some of the fears I have with with some of the multi-dwelling aspects. I mean, there is a housing shortage right now. Um, if, if it's not something that we want to see on shoreline to protect the natural resources, um, you know, would there be avenues to still have those on off water lots? Um, I think that's something that definitely needs to be decided. And it's, if it is something that we don't want to see on shoreline, if I have a thousand feet of frontage on Barber Lake and I want to open up a six unit resort, I'm not going to be able to necessarily do so unless I was to split that into six individual lots, still be classified as a resort and still require conditional use approval. That's how I guess I would interpret what we'd potentially be looking at. Uh, with a six unit lot creation, it would also require a county subdivision plat. So if I want to open up a new resort, thousand feet of frontage, 10, I got eight acres with it. And I want to do six units. I'll have to split it into six individual lots through a county subdivision plat and a conditional use permit to operate as a resort so that I can rent those out. Mm. And if that's what we want to see, we can go that route. Um, I just need direction to say that, yep, that's, that's what we, that's how you could do it if you wanted to do it. I'm, I'm fine. With if you already spoke, forth. we'll just, let's, res let's respect it. If other people would like to speak first, I would like to do that. Is there any other townships that would like to speak? How about any other zoning members? Anybody would like to speak or ask questions? Question, Jay. So your last description, it's, is it semantics then? I mean, people don't want multi-unit, but you can still get multi-unit through a different avenue. So nothing's different. Does it cost the applicant more? Does it discourage them? Is that what appeases? Is that what people want? It, it definitely would cost more. It would be more time consuming. It would be a hindrance um, unless we were to change it somewhere else that it's just totally well, prohibited. Costly to who? Costly to the applicant or the county? Both. More so the applicant because we would charge the fees right. to hold the meetings for okay. approvals. Um, so it's like the term, but the multi-units could still go on and just call it something different. Yeah, you'd have to do it. You'd have to split the property into multiple lots. If you're going to split it into more than four lots, you would have to do it through a subdivision plat process. And then at that point, you would still be classified and called a resort and require conditional use permit approval right. to operate a resort and a resort being that you're, you're renting it for profit. Right. I understand. But so the people that don't, the complaints are not, the folks that don't want it. That would be it. They wouldn't like that answer either, I guess, right? I yeah, I can't speak for them. I mean, there would there would still be a process, and instead of just the conditional use permit, where again we would have to verify that you know per the dwelling the per the number of dwelling units that you want that you still meet the dimensional requirements of the lot that you have a full one hundred feet of frontage measured at a right angle, and you have you know two hundred feet of depth and twenty thousand square feet for each unit proposed. And if we're not allowing that route, then you would have to create separate individual lots that meet those same dimensional requirements. But the only way you can do more than four is through a subdivision process. So the, the extra element that you're adding for someone that really wants to say, I want to open up a six unit resort, that you would have to get a subdivision plat. In either of those scenarios, you'd still need a conditional use permit, whether or not we strike multi-dwelling out or not, you'd still have to get a conditional use permit to operate it as a result. I guess I, I understand what you're saying to the, to the naked eye, take away all the terms. The end result is the same. Except the dwelling units are now spaced out further along the shoreline as opposed to cluster development. That's the only difference I can okay. see in the, in that scenario. And that may be preferred by the public, I guess. Yeah. And the town has more of a say through a subdivision plat process for driveway road access um, because if those, if that resort was to then, you know, sell off and it would be an easier process to then sell off those individual lots, it would be really kind of up to the town. I mean, do we want to have that as a new little town road or keep it as a private driveway, et cetera? Thank you. But, yeah. I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jay, I think you already answered it though, but, um, if we continue to move forward with amending this ordinance, which we need to do, 
I understand that. Is there going to be some form of grandfather clause then for these places that are already in place? Or um, will there be just conditional, conditional use permits that will have to be applied for? Because I know you spoke, we have these mm-hmm. resorts now already. Right. Uh, and, and that would be that'd be interesting. So grandfathering, in essence, is a nonconformity where the current ordinance allowed it. We're now changing the ordinance. You're now nonconforming. You're a.k.a. grandfathered. It would be if you were then to propose additional dwelling units where, again, I have a thousand feet of frontage. I have six units. I want to now add another unit. That would be the interesting scenario, and that would be something I'd want to work out with with legal. Uh, I'm, I, there's a way we could craft ordinance language to allow something like that. Again, it would be through and have to be through a conditional use permit process, but that would be the other interesting scenario that you run into with striking out multi dwelling development in the current. Okay, I think we're muddying the waters too, and um, constantly focusing on shoreline. I think there should be a shoreline versus non-shoreline because we do have a housing crisis and people are going to need to build multiple units because people can't afford individual units. So my opinion would be to draft something uh, so where they could see in the amendment that there's a shoreline and then a non-shoreline um, multi-dwelling, with, which would stay two or more, not three or more. Does anybody else have questions that hasn't spoke? Okay. Uh, I see a hand up for Liz Klein. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I Go ahead. No, that's okay. I actually. I'll get you. Hi, this is actually Chris Klein. Uh, uh, we're sharing this uh, screen today. Uh, I'm from the town of Draper Plan Commission, and I just wanted to uh, to say that yeah, I do believe that a lot of the concern is based around the shoreland protection, and so I think you're on target that that this issue needs to be split between shoreland and not, not shoreland. I think people would approve of multi-unit development on non-shoreland areas. Um, and the other issue that I see is in, maybe my understanding of this is incorrect, but I it seems to me that in the past, like the RR1 districts used to have a minimum acreage of like five acres per lot. And, uh, and then there was a period of time where they were allowed to be subdivided. And I think that a lot of the towns are expressing the desire to kind of move that back to where those lots have a minimum size that's that's not just 100 feet or whatever. Uh, having the five acre lot as a minimum size would certainly protect the shoreland much better than allowing subdivisions on the lake. So that's just my two cents and maybe that that clarifies more of the position that the towns are coming from. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. I can't see who you are, so I couldn't call you by name. I think it's Joan, but I'm not sure. Uh, Joan Zervanka, resident, town of Hayward. And uh, Jay, my, I, when you mentioned the, the apartment issue as a factor of multi-dwelling, I appreciate that idea being brought forward, considering Sawyer County is one of the impoverished and the housing shortage we have. So I think that the highlighting, in addition to the resort situation, multi-dwelling and the definition with apartments is very important. And townhouses and developments like that, for example, Water's Edge facility, that's got a lot of people living in it in a multi-living situation. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Ben. And just remember, we're gathering ideas. We're not debating. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I agree with the apartment issue. However, I think most people can agree. The unfortunate thing about our county is that people who have money to spend on buildings don't look at buying a, or building apartments for people who need homes. Most of the building in our county is high-end lake homes. That's where the money is. That's where the builders want to build. That's one of the reasons we don't have apartments around here. Um, secondly, there is talk about grandfathering something in. I guess I'd like to ask Jay how many places would not be compliant if they did away with this multi-dwelling on uh, Lakeshore. Because my feeling is if, if somebody is not in compliance with the law, you don't grandfather them in to make them legal. You make them comply with the law. So the idea of grandfathering in certain uh, operations, which there can't be very many at this point, a handful 
I would recommend um, having them comply with the zoning ordinances as opposed to grandfathering in any um, illegalities that they are currently doing. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? We do have a full plate otherwise, so I just would like to move this along. Doug? Can you come to the microphone? The people online would really appreciate it. Douglas Kurtz, Hoyle, 11055W Arrow Road, Hayward, Wisconsin, again. Uh, if I wanted to build a motel, 10 unit motel, five acres, whatever, on water or off water, in an R1 zone, I can't do that, can I? In the current ordinance, and that's where it gets muddy, but, no, but yes, I mean, RR1, I RR1 I does allow for multi-dwelling development. A motel. Multi-dwelling development, regardless of the form of ownership, consisting of three or more. Um, and then you look at the conditional use permit aspects, multi-dwelling development, i.e. new condominium, hotel, motel, resort, or other development, which is in the same general scale or character. But our, uh, and that is within RR1 and RR2. As a multi-unit development, but resorts are illegal in an RR1. Nope, they're authorized by conditional use permit in the current ordinance. In an RR1 or 2? Both. Uh, that's not really how the court case went. The court case would have been the definition of a resort, which would have rendered that rental of more than one is constituted as a resort. Right. But as uses authorized by conditional use permit, in the RR1 and RR2 zone district does allow for multi-dwelling development, which is condominium, hotel, motel, or resort. Well, then I guess you do have some conflicts in yes. that ordinance. Yes. And, and uh, That's what we're here that's for. Okay. <laughs> two, two or more. Two or more has got to be your limit. Two or more. Because anything more than two is not going to pass the towns. Anything more than one, right won't pass the towns. And you've got another problem that has not been referenced here at all this morning. That is over the last 30 years, there are hundreds of garages that were built on our R1 lots mm -hmm. throughout the county where people come into the zoning office and it, it predates your presence here. That's a separate issue. Let's keep it on task. Okay, but we've got hundreds of houses mm -hmm. on top of garages on single family lots scattered throughout the county. Mm -hmm. And this is an issue that, uh, yeah, it's uh, you're going to make them legal now that they've broken the law for the last five to We can bring years. that up at another meeting. How about that? We'll put it on the agenda for when Ron's here and he can talk to you. Well, that puts, okay. that puts multi-units on single family lots also. Okay. Thank you, Doug. All right. So if anybody has any other questions, I'm going to conclude this conversation. What action item would you like to come out of this? Um, I don't necessarily need a motion. It's, it was really just to gain knowledge and discussion, um, you know, from, from hearing from the audience, from hearing from the towns, from hearing from the, the zoning committee. What I'll probably end up doing is getting a draft version together uh, that would separate out multi-dwelling development from the shoreline district uh, to still potentially have it allowed in non-shoreline to really kind of take a look at potential housing crises, because if you're looking at wanting to build a, a, a quadplex right now, there are no avenues to potentially do it. Um, and if we want to potentially allow that in non shoreline, I guess, you know, let me make the draft versions of the ordinance to have that type of use allowed, not necessarily allowed, but allowed by conditional use permit still. Um, so we'll, we'll try to get something polished up. Um, We'll review it here at the zoning committee and then eventually send it out to the towns. If you want and any town officials or general members of the public want to be involved with uh, some of that draft creation over the next few months, uh, please, because I am really asking for help on this because this has been a hair pulling scenario for the last uh, almost a year now. So, Madam Chair, we did talk about um, wanting to come up with the adequate definition of resort. And when I read our current definition of resort, I think it is appropriate as written. Yeah, I probably would just clarify that it would be more than, yeah, 
contained in more than one. So over one dwelling unit being rented would be, you know, constituted as a resort. The other aspects is what do we do with the existing ones that are out there? Um, again, if we're now making it illegal to operate a resort in or a multi dwelling development, which is classified as a resort in the shoreline district, are there avenues for those existing resort owners to add additional units if they have the land to do so? Or for those that have two existing dwelling units on one lot to become a resort, because we have, I would say, well over a thousand properties out there throughout Sawyer County that are, again, non conforming with that they already have two dwelling units or more than two dwelling units on one lot. As of right now, it might be just all the family that says, you know, you, you're in the, the Bluebird cabin, I'm in the, the Robin cabin, and you're in the Cardinal cabin, and now we want to start renting it out to other individuals. Well, that meets the definition of a resort, and is there an avenue for an individual to apply to operate that as a resort? Those are the other issues that I struggle with. And those are things that I'll need additional talking points from this committee and or town input. Oh, you're talking about changing it from a family, <clears throat> excuse me, to now a resort rental. Right. And if they're changing their use, I think that they then need to follow the law and, be, and divide it and do it the way the current or the new. Well, in a lot of cases, orders. you wouldn't be able to divide those. You know, we got... I have three units that I only have 280 feet of frontage. I can't divide it into multiple lots now. Well, then you can't do it. Right, okay. All right, so we have a lot of good discussion. I'm gonna give the audience a minute to clear so that we can move on. If you'd like to stay, you're welcome to. I just didn't know if you'd wanna hear the zoning, um, the rest of the zoning meeting, but Frank, did you have a question? The gentleman uh, made a point about uh, grandfather's status and not being in compliance. Uh, if that happens because you change the ordinance, there there is nothing really that compels somebody to come compliant. Is there if they don't take any action to uh, change their property? I mean, you can stay non-compliant if you. Frank, can you state? Who, oh, are you are Frank Zufall with the Surrey County Record? Thank you. Sure. Very, the the grandfathering point is is an important one. Um, and you know, as, as Mr. Kurzweil stated, there are restrictions on grandfathering non-compliant properties. So, um, I don't know how many resorts in Sawyer County now do not comply with these definitions. So, yes, you could potentially have many resorts that are quote unquote illegal right now. Those resorts, generally speaking, would not be grandfathered in to a new ordinance unless you make that ordinance specific to them and essentially make that ordinance retroactive. Um, so there is a problem with all of the resorts that are operating right now that are not in compliance. And I think it's my understanding that's one of the big motivations for the county wanting to change the ordinance is to make sure that there are there's ways for for compliance to be achieved because right now there's not right yeah based not, on the ambiguities with, right. and the inconsistencies Correct. so there's again there um in it to, another component of grandfathering that's challenging is you have to look at um individual uh, properties really on a case-by-case -case basis because you have to look at when did the use start? Did it predate the existing code? Did it predate um, any existing, when any changes were made to the multi-dwelling um, code? You have to look at all of those specific points to determine what is, um, would be a non-conforming use versus a conforming use, therefore what would be grandfathered. Thank you. Steve, I'll let you speak and then we're going to conclude this discussion. 
Great, thank you. Um, I guess just for perspective, the last four years we've seen quite the flurry of activity flow through zoning. Could you just please give us a, a kind of a rough estimate of how many multifamily permits have come across zoning's desk and how many new resort permits have come across zoning's desk, please? Yeah, really there's only been kind of two applications that I've seen in the last four years that have wanted to do you know, multi-dwelling development. And those were scenarios where an individual had, you know, plenty of the frontage amount, plenty of the square footage amount, and wanted to either have two or three dwelling units on one lot, whether it was as a family compound setting, whether it was someone that was already doing one short-term rental, but they had 300 feet of frontage and, you know, a couple acre lot, and they wanted to add another dwelling unit but they didn't want to go through the route of specifically dividing that into two separate lots. Now, ultimately that was one of the things that really kind of fired off the, the conversations of the multi dwelling development. And that individual then did go through a certified survey map process, split it into two separate lots and is now renting out both of those dwelling units on separate lots as short-term rentals. You know, with that then comes the argument is okay, you have two units that you're renting. They're on two separate lots. Are you still a resort? The use is there, but they're on separate lots. And that's one of the other arguments that we need to uh, at least try to figure out one way or the other is, is it is it the lot scenario or is it the use scenario um, that classifies you as a resort? So that's, so you say two. So out of five years, how many permits have, and, and, have you issued in the say four or five years then? Well, and Give that's us a little perspective. Right. Well, and that's, I guess, you know, the other argument is we don't necessarily see the licensing for short term rentals through the zoning department. Uh, and that is through another ad hoc committee that we're, we're discussing. But, um, you know, right now that's handled through the health department. So if you had, you know, four lots on Lake Loretta, they're all separate lots and you wanted to rent out each individual dwelling on those lots. And let's not even say that they're contiguous. Let's say one's on the north side, one's on the south, one's on the east, one's on the west. You know, that would be the other question. Are, are you still operating a resort because you have, you know, four units on that lake? Um, or do they have to be contiguous? Does it matter if they're on separate lots? So those types of permits as to how many of those have we gotten, I don't have a number to work off of because that is something that's controlled by the health department. You know, obviously, yes, there's been a huge increase in building since 2020. And we're well above our 15 year average on permits. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me that, you know, some type of LLC company out there has, you know, multiple rentals, you know, but in different areas throughout the county, are they operating a resort? Um, those are those are questions that we still need to figure out. So, Jay, fair to say it's like two permits out of. I mean, I know when we talked about the dam, you zoning. Uh, Tim was in and talked about something like four hundred and eighty use permit requests coming through zoning. So, we're, so what volume are we talking about? Is this like two out of two thousand? Two out of a thousand? Well, it's it's the only ones that I would see are those that actually wanted to submit for a conditional use permit to operate a multi dwelling development to operate a you know legal resort. So again, I wouldn't have a, a working number, but the only two that have been requested over the last couple of years, um, yeah, it was two and probably two thousand. But that's not to say that again, if you were to want to, you got six hundred feet of frontage, you want to divide it into three separate lots and put dwelling units on each one. That would still be, in my eyes, something that would be viewed as a resort and you should get a conditional use permit. But we need to clarify that and classify that in our current ordinance. Great, thanks, Jay. Thank yep. you, everybody. All right, thank you everybody for the discussion and your input. Um, again, we wanna respect the townships, so we appreciate what you're, what you're telling us or what you're not telling us and would like to send it to us, so thank you. All right, moving on. Yeah. To number three, rezone applications. Yeah, so this is the uh, public hearing in the town of Ojibwa, rezone 23009, owner Alexander. Okay. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but yep. I did say that I would give a minute. Yep. So if people wanted to sure. remove themselves, otherwise you're having to talk really loud. And we have a potty break, Elson. Okay. 
And those online, we're, we're going to wait just a few minutes for the room to clear. So we'll be on a two minute break. Uh, yep. Yep. All right, we'll be uh, back here to the meeting after a little break. Um, so this is rezone application number, uh, public hearing for rezone application 23009, Town of Ojibwa, owner Alexandria and Annie Worth, uh, tax ID 20206, 9.6 total acres zone commercial one. Purpose of the request is to rezone the 9.6 acres from commercial one to agricultural two as per the owner of the application, they have requested a withdrawal. The township of Ojibwa denied the request due to the neighbors not wanting the farm. We wish to formally withdraw our request, Alexandria Worth. With a request withdrawal from the applicant, it would be the zoning administrator's recommendation that we would not hold a public hearing on the matter and make a motion to withdraw the request. I'll make that motion to withdraw the request for the I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any discussion? All right. Go to number or item B. No. Yes. Um this is the public hearing in the town of Draper, rezone number twenty-three dash zero one zero, owner Lawrence Pollock. Tax ID seven three seven five. It was forty seven or sorry forty six point four two total acres split zone between forestry one and residential recreational one. Purpose of the request is to rezone approximately two point four acres from forestry one to residential recreational one, uh, and then to submit for a subdivision plat that would create five waterfront lots. Uh, as per the applicant, they have also requested a withdrawal. The Town of Draper Planning Committee denied the request on 10-4-2023 and the full board denied the request on 10-9-2023. It is highly unlikely that the Sawyer County would go against the town's denial. Therefore, we are requesting a withdrawal of the application signed for the agent of the case, Jack Akers Secluded Land Company. With a request from the applicant or applicant's agent for a withdrawal request, it would be the zoning administrator's recommendation to the zoning committee that we would uh, accept the withdrawal request without holding public hearing motion to withdraw i'll second that all in favor aye. aye and any opposed any discussion madam chair normally we have discussion before we vote thank you sorry about that uh, motion is approved to withdraw the application. This is the public hearing in the town of Radisson, conditional use permit number 23023, owner Joseph and Colette Bauer, Northwest one quarter, the Southwest one quarter, section one, township 38, North range seven, uh, tax ID 22130, 40 total acres, zone forestry one, permit is requested for the construction of a 30 by 50 pole shed on vacant land subject to the provisions of the Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance section 4.26, parent one. As part of the staff report, um, as per section 4.26 parent one, the construction of accessory buildings on vacant property may be allowed by conditional use with town and zoning committee approval. Granting of the conditional use permit will require that within three years that the principal dwelling uh, land use permit be applied for and the principal dwelling to be built within that same permit time frame on that same parcel. Failure to build the, per, uh, the principal dwelling will result in citations in order for removal of the structure. As per conversations with the applicant, the conditional use permit is being requested first to build an outdoor building prior to constructing the cabin. Proposed accessory structure to meet all other Sawyer County zoning setbacks and use requirements. The size of the garage not to exceed 30 by 50 feet. A fire number has already been applied for on this property uh, as part of my conditions listed in my staff report. Again, that the land use permit uh, for the accessory structure would be applied for within one year of the zoning committee's decision. That a land use permit for the principal structure be applied within three years from the zoning committee decision and built within that permit time frame. The proposed accessory structure to meet all other Sawyer County zoning requirements, setbacks, state and federal laws, and the size of the proposed structure not to exceed 30 by 50. As action of the town board, motion was approved. Phil Quad, or Chairman uh, Ron Kinsley, Supervisor, no additional comments. Signed Cheryl Gerber, Town Clerk. There were four additional notification letters sent out to adjacent property owners. None of those were returned. That is all. Thank you, Jay. Uh, I do need a motion to go into public hearing for CUP 23-023. So move. Second. 
All in favor. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Um, is the applicant here? If you could come up to the podium, state your name and address, please. Good morning. Uh, Colette and Joseph Bauer. Um, we're from uh, Lindstrom, Minnesota, and uh, as noted in the, the paperwork, the property in questions in uh, Radisson. Um, so uh, yes, we're applying for the conditional use permit for the reason, as noted, construction of a cold storage building. Uh, the intent is to store our utility equipment, like a tractor and mower, um, that we would use to maintain the land so we can upkeep the property um, it, before we have, uh, as noted, the cabin in a couple of years out uh, in the, the time frame noted by Jay. Um, just trying to uh, keep the property trails mowed and cleared and uh, maintain um, the, the clearing of the brush and down trees and that type of thing. So it's just really for more of a utility purpose until much time we can uh, build that uh, that cabin in a couple of years uh, per the, the time frame noted. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the committee? Yeah, I guess I do. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Bauer, I see there's creeks that run through your property here. Are you further, far enough away from there where this building's gonna be? Yeah, for the, uh, the GIS I measured, it's close to about a thousand feet. Oh. From the closest part of the creek, it might be a better image. There you go. Yeah, so looking at the north oh. side of that little cleared area, kind of where my mouse is, so the, the creek that runs through the southern part is, is quite a bit of distance away. Right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Are there those here that wish to speak in favor of the CUP 23-023? Uh, anyone wish to speak against? CUP 23-023. All right, I'm entertaining a motion to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion passes. Uh, this is the discussion action for the Town of Radisson conditional use permit number 23-023. Um, owner Joseph and Colette Bauer. Legal description is please previously read into record. Uh, permit is requested for the construction of a 30 by 50 pole shed on vacant land subject to the provisions of the Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance Section 4.26 Parent 1 with the um, conditions as previously read into record included within my staff report. Uh, let's just do discussion. Okay. Does the committee wish to discuss or take action? Do we need to have as a condition that there's no habitable space in this uh, building? Um, so as part of the staff report and those conditions, it would be to meet all other county zoning provisions. And that would include that, yeah, no habitable area included within the cold storage building. There would be a potential that if they came back with another separate land use permit, that they wanted to somehow turn this into a shouse that that habitable area be included in that and still met UDC, you could do that still, but that would still need to be done within that three-year time frame, and it can be difficult to convert into a habitable pole shed, but um, it would still meet zoning code provisions at that point. Mr. Schumann, did you have a question? Your light is on. Sorry. No, I guess I'm ready to make a motion to approve um, with Jay's staff report conditions, um, along with these conditions for approval and finding a fact for approval, one through nine. Second. Any discussion? Do you need a roll call, Kathy, or do you want to? Okay. Kay Wilson. Yes. Michael Maestri. Yes. Tweet Schumann. Yes. Stacy Hessel. Yes. John Righeimer. Yes. Thank you. All in. Thank you. Uh, moving on, this is a public hearing in the town of Winter, conditional use permit number 23-024, owner Gene Rodell and others, part of the northeast one quarter, the northeast one quarter, section three, township 39 north, range five west. Uh, tax ID 34673, it is 39.47 total acres, zoned residential recreational one. 
Permit is desired for the 100 foot by 100 foot leased area for a 225 foot telecommunication tower and its ground mounting equipment. Um, that is to provide better cell phone and data coverage to the surrounding area, along with a gravel driveway that would be coming off of County Highway B to the leased area. This would be as per the Sawyer County uh, Telecommunication Ordinance. As part of my staff report, um, again, this is per section 17.2, parent B, parent two, the Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance and the Sawyer County Telecommunication Ordinance in conjunction with Wisconsin state statutes with the new changes uh, within chapter 66.0404 of mobile tower siting regulations, including the changes in 2017 and 2019. Counties are somewhat limited to uh, local regulations as long as the applicant or mobile service provider comply with the provisions and regulations specified in 66.0404. The Sawyer County Telecommunication Ordinance um, would not be compliant at this point due to those state statutes still working on ordinance amendment corrections for that. Uh, but per the regulations established in 66.0404 parent 2 parent B, the application process which a person must complete to uh, engage in the siting or construction or modification activities uh, shall be in writing and shall obtain the following information the name, address, business other than contact individual for the applicant, which is included in the packet, the location of the proposed and affected support structure, which is also included, the, the location of the proposed mobile service facility, which is also included. Um, if the application is to construct a new mobile service tower, which it is, the construction plan, which describes the proposed mobile service support structure and equipment and network components, including antennas, transmitters, uh, receivers, base stations, power supply, cabling, and related equipment to be placed on or above the new mobile support service structure. Um, within 90 days of the receipt, oh, sorry, I missed one. Um, if the applicant is to construct a new mobile support structure, an explanation is why the applicant chose that location uh, must be included with a sworn statement from the individual who is responsible over the placement of the tower uh, that the inability or feasibly uh, infeasible uh, to co-locate uh, that is also included the Sawyer County Zoning Administrator has deemed that this packet and this application is complete within 90 days of the submittal which was from August 14th Sawyer County shall complete all the following uh, review the application make a final decision notify the applicant in writing of its final decision uh, if the decision is to disapprove the application included uh, within the writing or the written notification of substantial evidence which supports the decision uh, a political subdivision may disapprove an application if the applicant refuses to evaluate the feasibility of co-location. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go through the, the rest of the highlights here. Uh, the proposed tower height would be 225 feet and would be located 175 feet to the closest setback line. The applicant must either provide a letter from a professional engineer indicating that even though the tower would um would be within the fall zone of a setback line that that tower is designated to collapse within a radius less than 175 feet or move the location of the tower of a distance of 225 feet from any adjacent property lines, including the road right of way. Uh, this will be placed as a condition of approval and that the fall zone letter has not been received at this time. Uh, in conversations with the agent, he has stated that all towers now are designed to be self-collapsing and will reach out to the engineer to provide documentation. Uh, if the committee accepts the engineer certificate of a greater setback distance than the fall zone distance, uh, then that setback line may not be imposed. Um, as per my other conditions as listed in the staff report, that a land use permit would be required for the telecommunication facility prior to erection or construction, that a separate site address or fire number is required for the tele location, that a fall zone letter is required for a lesser setback distance from the right of way line of County Highway B. Prior to issuing the land use permit, the applicant or owner of the telecommunication facility shall provide a bond, your irrevocable letter of credit or uh, other uh, suitable financial guarantees as to ensure that the removal of the facility if it falls into disuse or restoration back to the pre-construction state in the amount of $20,000 that all other town, county, state, and federal laws are followed, including town approval of the conditional use permit, county highway approval for additional driveway access off county highway B, and that a 40-foot wetland setback be compliance for all fencing included with the telecommunication tower. As by motion of the town board, motion was approved. John Zerliski, supervisor, Ronald Fandry, supervisor, uh, Tom Howell, supervisor, 
no additional comments signed Gina Pettit, town clerk. There were 11 additional notification letters sent out. None were returned. That is all. Thank you, Jay. Uh, at this time, I'd entertain a motion to go into public hearing for CUP 23-024. Motion. Any discussion? Okay, we are in public hearing. Oh, is the applicant here? Okay. You just want to state your name and... Uh, yes, Carl Gerber, Buell Consulting. Um, we're the ones that have kind of facilitated the lease and everything for this property. So, Do you have anything that you'd like to say? Um, I think Jay covered a lot of it, a 225-foot tower. The one thing I would add to that is that there is a lightning rod on top of that. That uh, that proposed lightning rod is another 10 feet, so 235 would be the max height, but the actual structure itself is 225. Okay. Anybody have any questions for the applicant? Uh, I guess I have one follow up. Oh, Do you have any issues with the, the conditions that I listed that you would still provide the fall zone letter? Uh, I I believe I had sent that to okay. you, but it might have been uh, late. I know that was via yeah, email. Yeah, I, I didn't see the, the fall zone letter. And, and I mean, that would be something that you know, again, if, if this committee approves the application, we, we can finalize yeah. that. But I just need assurances that, you know, if this is going to be a 235 foot tower, that that fall zone would be, you know, lesser that distance to the highway. Yeah, right now, the fall zone letter that we do have, and I can double check to make sure that I did send it to you, it is 50%. So half the height of the tower. Perfect. And then no other issues with the, the bond amount? No, no, okay. that's that's a pretty standard thing that we deal with. So yeah, that's fine. Any other questions for the applicant? All right, thank you. Anybody wishing to speak in favor of this application? CUP dash, sorry, twenty three dash zero two four. Anybody wishing to speak against this application? Twenty three dash zero two four. All right, then I need a motion to go uh, to close public hearing for CUP 23-024. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, we are out of public hearing. Uh, this is the discussion action for conditional use permit number 23-024, Jean Rodell and others. Legal description is previously read into record. Permit is desired for the 100 foot by 100 foot leased area for a 225 a uh, foot telecommunication tower, including 10 foot lightning rod uh, to provide better cell service and data to that coveraging uh, that surrounding area. Um, as per the staff report, again, um, keep any type of motion to include the conditions as listed in my staff report, which we've heard from the applicant has agreed to. I make a motion that we approve uh... Cup 23-024 with uh, the list of your conditions, Jay, on uh, points one through nine. Go ahead, Mr. Did we, I'll second that, yep. Or did we second it yet? No, no you're, you you're good. Yep, you're good. And then in discussion, Madam Chair, when we approve like one through nine, uh, the one, is this... Is this compatible with the town and county's comprehensive plan? I don't remember if we ever discussed that, a tower like this. So within the comprehensive plan, it doesn't specifically look at certain locations in which telecommunication towers should be placed, but it does have an avenue and a, a talking points that specify the need to have additional telecommunication facilities to, again, provide you know, coverage to those those areas that may uh, really not have any. So then it would be compatible. It would. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? May I ask, has um, the driveway access been looked at yet by the uh, highway commissioner? Um, I'm not aware of that. I don't know if the applicant or agent can speak to that. Have you had? It's up to you. you can bring have, that. Yep, you can answer the question. I, I, Yep, please do so so the people online can hear you. Um, we we haven't applied yet for that driveway permit. We just kind of first want to see that we could get the conditional use and then um, 
you know, apply for that fire number, that E911 number and everything like that. And I, I will say that it is off of a county highway, so it would be through the county highway department, which yeah. is ultimately a lot easier than DOT. Um, generally, that's going to be Brad Bysey that's going to be looking at the highway access and, and looking at the attached maps. There's going to be pretty good line of sight. You're looking at a driveway access that's just here to the west of this wetland boundary. Um, so there's going to be pretty good, clean, visual line of sight. I, I would have no uh, okay. indication that they would deny such a permit for that. I just didn't know if we wanted to include number five in that or not without knowing. So, all right. Well, it's still a condition because ultimately, if the highway department says, no, we're not giving you a driveway permit, they can't meet all the conditions, the conditional use permit fails. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. Roll call vote, please. Tweed Schumann. Yes. Stacy Hessel. Yes. Michael Maestri. Yes. John Righeimer. Yes. Kay Wilson. Yes. All in favor. Thank you. All right, moving on. This is a public hearing in the town of Bass Lake. Conditional use permit number 23-025. Owner John and Mary Bross. Uh, Abin Post Beach, first edition. Lots 25 and 26 of block 12. Tax ID 301. It is 0 0.171 acres zoned residential recreational one. Permit is desired for the construction of a garage across the town road from where the primary dwelling is located. Garage is not to exceed 600 square feet and less than 18 feet in height. This is per section 4.26, parent two of the Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance. As per my staff report, um, the applicant is recalled, uh, requesting to build a 600 square foot accessory structure on the backside of the uh, Couturier Lake Drive from where the primary dwelling is located. The dimensions of the garage are shown in the attached maps within this packet, which I'll bring up here momentarily. Uh, the current primary dwelling is on a separate lot immediately adjacent across the town road. The proposed garage would not be able to fit on that lakeside portion due to setback requirements. The proposed garage would be located approximately 250 feet from the lake and would meet all other setback requirements. It would also meet all the provisions and subsections of section 4.26 parent 2 of the Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance. This property is located in a platted subdivision and additional survey work has been conducted on the property for setback compliance which is also needed to uh, meet for the eave overhang setbacks. Um, uh, impervious service standards would not apply on this lot in that this lot is not entirely within 300 feet of the ordinary high watermark as established by NR 115.05 parent one sub E. A previous conditional use permit and variance case was requested for this parcel back in 2021. The variance case was denied at the town level for reduced road setbacks. Um, this request now will meet all road setback requirements, but would still require the granting of a conditional use permit for an accessory structure across a town road from where the primary dwelling is located. As a list for conditions included in my staff report, I have no habitable areas allowed in the structure, no commercial use or operation is allowed in the structure, size of the proposed accessory structure not to exceed 600 square feet in total footprint and less than 18 feet in height, a deed restriction or restrictive covenants must be recorded with the registered deeds office so that the parcels are not sold separately, must follow all other town, county, state, and federal regulations, laws, including an additional driveway permit from the town. As motion from the town board, motion was approved. Justin Hall, chairman, Dave Albart, supervisor, James Evans, supervisor, Don Adams, supervisor. Grant, um, this is conditional use permit 23025. Granting of the conditional use would not, bury, uh, not be contrary to public interest and would be in compliance with the spirit and the intent of the Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance and the Town of Bass Lakes Comprehensive Plan Section 8.10 because no habitable area is allowed in the structure, no commercial use or operation is allowed in the structure, size of the proposed accessory structure not to exceed 600 square feet in total footprint and less than 18 feet in height, a deed restriction or restrictive covenants must be recorded with the Register of Deeds Office so that parcels may not be sold separately. Um, must follow all other town, county, state, and federal laws, including an additional driveway permit from the town, driveway to be located off of Fox Avenue. That is from the Town of Bass Lake Planning Commission made a recommendation of approval from the town board uh, and then signed Tammy Brown, town clerk. There were 18 additional notification letters sent out to adjacent property owners zero were returned that is all 
Okay, at this time, thank you, Jay. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to go into public hearing for CUP 23-025. Motion. Make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, is the applicant here? If you'd like to come up, please. Hi, I'm Joe Heilman, agent builder for Mary Jo and John Bross. Uh, basically, it's for the construction of the garage, and you mentioned everything. And if we did the impervious surface, approximately 0.0 or 6.2% of the impervious surface. Does the committee have any questions for the applicant? No. Okay, thank you. Sure. Is anybody here wishing to speak in favor of CUP 23-025? Is anyone here in uh, wishing to speak against CUP 23-025? Okay, I'd like a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of closing. Yes, thank you. Uh, discussion action, Town of Bass Lake, conditional use permit number 23-025, owner John and Mary Jo Bross. Legal description is previously read into record. Application is for the construction um, of a, a garage across a town road from where the primary dwelling is located, not to exceed 600 square feet and 18 feet in height as per section 4.26, parent two of the Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance with taking into mind the conditions as listed in the staff report. I do have other uh renderings as to how the garage is to look it's it, it's the same as shown on the map there um the town did make a condition that the driveway access to be coming off of fox so there is going to be a, a doorway that faces fox as well as to the south I, I do believe this map is oriented north so there'll be a garage door on the west side of this building and a garage door on the south side of the building i just got these the the new drawings here today as to how that uh, looks and the applicant has submitted a land use permit uh, pending approval of the conditional use permit. Thank you. Any discussion? Um, and Jay, you mentioned that the applicant is fine with all the conditions the town and your staff report include. I guess to get it on record, we should ask the applicant, are you agreeable to all conditions as specified in my staff report and to the conditions as indicated by the town? I heard a verbal yes from the owner, Mr. John Bross. I'll make a, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll make a motion to approve CUP 23-025. Second. Okay, uh, roll call vote, please. Um, I was, I was I, going to, before second. I got seconded, I was going Thank to you. say with the conditions of the zoning administrator and one through me. Thank you for your second. Yeah. Thank, thank you for giving me grace. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to fill Ron Buckles' shoes here, but I'm not doing a very good job. But okay. So, any other discussion? Okay. Roll call vote, please. Stacy Hessel. Yes. Kay Wilson. Michael Maestri. Yes. Tweed Schumann. Yes. John Righeimer. Yes. All in favor. Thank you. All right, moving on to final plat reviews. This is a public hearing for the final county subdivision plat for Larson Family Trust, Town of Lenroot. Uh, this does require discussion action. Uh, as per my staff report, you had heard this uh, preliminary plat uh, last month. This is a public hearing for the final plat review. As part of the county subdivision plat request, the applicant is seeking to submit for a plat consisting of two total lots. A larger block of land was recently subdivided by certified survey map process in order to further subdivide more than four lots within a five-year time frame, a subdivision plat is required. The proposed two lot split would have over six acres of land each uh, that would that be located above that ordinary high watermark and over 212 feet of frontage on each lot. The intent of the subdivision plat is to then add another dwelling unit on the proposed separate lot. As per the Story County subdivision ordinance, as part of the final plat, Final plats are to be submitted to the zoning committee within 180 days of the preliminary plat acceptance. Uh, final plats shall be presented to the zoning administrator and the deputy at least 10 working days 
prior to the zoning committee meeting and shall be considered to and shall be accepted conditionally accepted or rejected by the zoning committee within 60 days the final plat shall conform to the preliminary plat as approved and the requirements of all applicable ordinances state laws shall be submitted for certification for those agencies under the platting requirements of uh, section 236 of the wisconsin state statutes final plat shall be accompanied by a town resolution approving the construction of all roadways uh, this one uh, is not going to be deemed as public roadways. These are, are to remain as private roadways. The zoning administrator has conditionally approved the final plat. Uh, where the zoning committee finds that additional information is relative to a problem or concern proposed by the plat uh, or proposed by the subdivision is needed, the zoning committee shall have the authority to request such information from the sub subdivider. Such additional information may include, but not limited to, soil borings conducting by a certified soil tester, a stormwater management plan under the requirements of NR216, achieving erosion control performance standards of NR151 or regional flood elevation. Uh, this total development would be less than one acre of earth disturbance and would not require a stormwater management plan. There's also no floodplain areas as part of this proposed development. Um, the Sawyer County Zoning Administrator, again, has deemed this application to be complete and I will turn it over to the committee. Uh, this would be similar in which you would want to open up a public hearing, close a public hearing, and then either approve, conditionally approve, or uh, deny with reason for the final plat submission. Okay, thank which you. I have. All right, thank you, Jay. Um, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to go into public hearing for the, um, Subdivision Platt Larson Family Trust. Yes, motion to go into public hearing. Okay, is the applicant here? Um, no, they had emailed me this morning and said that they would not be available this morning. Uh, nothing has changed from the preliminary plat, and we did get information back uh, from the town that has approved and has also signed off on the final plat. Okay, is there anyone here wishing to speak in favor of the Larson Family Trust uh, subdivision plat? Anyone here wishing to speak against? Okay, so do I close? Yep. Okay, so motion to approve the... Motion to come out of public. Hearing. Yes, I'll make sorry. A motion to, to come out of public. Hearing. Thank you for Second. helping me out. And now you're in discussion and action yep. of the final plat approval process. Go ahead, Mr. I, Schumann. Yes, I would make a motion to approve. My question to you, Jay, is conditionally approve or approve? Uh, so if you're going to conditionally approve, it's well, what what condition are, yeah, are you okay. putting on there? I, motion I to approve. Yep. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Hey Wilson. Yes. Michael Maestri. Yes. Tweed Schumann. Yes. John Righeimer. Yes. Stacy Hessel. Yes. All in favor. This is a public hearing for the final county subdivision plat for Hardwood Hills West, owner Paul Thompson, town of Hayward. Um, again, this request is the public hearing for the final plat approval process. As part of this county subdivision plat request, the applicant is seeking to submit for a plat consisting of 11 total lots. Um, final plat shall be submitted to the zoning committee within 180 days of the preliminary plat. The final plat shall conform with all the preliminary plats um, uh, confinements and as approved to the requirements of applicable ordinances and state laws included in section 236 of Wisconsin state statutes. Uh, approved final plat shall be recorded in the accordance of the statutory requirements of 236. The zoning administrator has conditionally approved the final plat where the zoning committee finds additional information relative to a problem or concern proposed by the proposed subdivision is needed. The zoning committee shall have the authority to request such information from the subdivider. Such additional information may include, but is not limited to soil borings conducted by a certified soil tester, stormwater management plan, um, achieving erosion control performance standards and regional flood elevation. The subdivider has submitted for a stormwater management plan to the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. The zoning administrator has deemed that this application is complete I will state, though, that uh, there was one element brought up through the final plat provision process at the town level uh, that the town ultimately needs to still sign a resolution 
accepting this as a town road. The final plat does indicate that the roadway coming off of Highway B is to be dedicated for the public as a town road. Uh, so if the zoning committee is to approve this plat, you would want to conditionally approve this plat that the town signs a resolution to accept this as a town road. Um, the town has, uh, again, signed off on this final plat as well. Um, it was my understanding with the town that they're going to have a separate, well, not a separate meeting, but their next month's town board meeting, take care of the resolution aspects to accept this as a town road. Okay, thank you. I'd like a motion to go into public hearing for the final plat Hardwood Hills West. Yes, Madam Chair, a motion. Okay, um, all approved. Uh, any discussion, all approved. I don't know what the heck I'm doing today. All right, so is the applicant or a representative of uh, Hardwood Hills here? If you could come up to the podium and It's Jesse Susan, Lance Brayer, and Hayward. Paul Thompson, landowner. Hayward. Um, I guess the only question that I would potentially have as legal counsel, and I was just discussing it, do you have any uh, objections to a potential condition that the town would sign a resolution adopting that as a town road so that we would conditionally approve this plat prior to recording of the plat in the registered deeds office, it would need to be accompanied with that town resolution. That would be fine. Okay. Do you, any other information that you'd like to give about this? Um, just been struggling getting the road finished with the rain. Um, that's basically it. I'm really close, just need a week of good weather. So. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I think I'd heard that there was some discussion at the town level that there was there was fear that this was going to become a campground or, or something of that nature. Now, ultimately, uh, this property is zoned still as residential recreational one, and, and campgrounds would only be allowed in a rec residential recreational two zone district. So, for whatever concerns may or might have been out there, uh, you would have to still undergo a larger rezone approval process and conditional use permit process if, if this was to ever be a campground. So. Um, from all the information that I have, it looks like it is to be an 11 lot subdivision. Correct. Okay. okay, thank you. I had one concern though. On my plat, I had Ron Buchholz as chair to sign it. I, I wasn't aware that Ron wasn't. Right, and, and both of the plats have that. And I think for those instances where the chair is not able to sign, the vice chair can sign in their stead and will probably end up really just lining that out okay. and having Stacy Hessel sign mm -hmm. as acting chair. Okay. Do you need me to? Yeah, you have to leave it up here. Um, after we close the public hearing and discussion, you can leave it now. Though. Yeah, you're, you won't get in trouble for leaving it now. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Is there anyone that wishes to speak in favor of this um, Hardwood Hills West? Uh, Joan Savanka, Town of Hayward Planning Commission, and I want to ask the zoning committee's apologies for us missing the need for the resolution uh, for the public road. This has been discussed at both planning committee and at board uh, about if it's since it's if it's been constructed to meeting t town specs, that it would be accepted. And I'm going to, uh, in advance, thank Jay for sending us a draft resolution so that we could get it right this time. And also, uh, just general information when speaking with uh, town board, they will get it at the next meeting and or if there's a special meeting between now and town board, they may be able to get this resolution uh, expedited. Okay. Thank you. Apologies. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Uh, Randy Becker, uh, 14184 West Chippewa Trail. My wife and I own property at, to the north of uh, this uh, subdivision. And 
I'm just uh, here to for moral support and give my okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak against this uh, Hardwoods Hills West? Okay, with none, uh, I need a motion to close the public hearing. Yes, Madam Chair. All right, we are out of public hearing. Discussion action for the uh, approval of the Hardwood Hills subdivision plat. Again, just to a uh, reminder, if you are going to approve, this would be one that you would want to conditionally approve upon the town of Hayward's resolution adopting this as a town road. Is that an alarm or just? It's feedback and I don't know where it's Oh, going. okay. I'll make a, a motion to conditionally approve the Hardwood Hills uh, plat. Second. Do we need to indicate the condition? Uh, a, the condition um, of a town road approval? Yes. There. Second. Any discussion? Kathy, can we have a roll call vote, please? Michael Maestri. Yes. Kay Wilson. John Righeimer. Yes. Stacy Hessel. Yes. Tweet Schumann. Yes. All in favor. Thank you. Uh, under new business, the only other thing I have is for 2024 meeting dates. You were sent a copy of potential meeting dates for 2024. Told you to do homework. Let me know if you had any issues with those. Um, but we would need a motion to accept as presented or change meeting dates if you had other suggestions. Motion to accept as presented. Any discussion? Jay, I'd like to ask if um, you get the town's opinions, if we could get that information before the meetings, uh, if you could send that out. I don't need to see all the opinion letters, but I would like to see the plan commission and the town opinion. Sure. Um, sometimes we get them pretty late. I and mean, sometimes we get them Thursday before a Friday meeting, yeah. um, but uh, I'll have and task Kathy to, to do that. So. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any uh, other any other business? Um, yeah, I I don't know if I'll get a draft version for multi dwelling development for November's. I also have a TRH licensing requirement document. I think I'm calling it that right now because I don't want to say the O word. Um, so we'll we'll see if I can get something for November's for multi dwelling development. Um, if not November by December. So. And then, do we want to mention the training uh, dates? Uh, yes. And, um, and how do we sign up? So there hasn't been an official sign up yet. Let me stop share so I can look at some of my emails here. So we do have some some training for zoning committee as well as uh, board of adjustments, and that is regional training, not just so your county correct. Correct. Okay. We're hosting, but it, this would be for regional training. Um, so keep this on your calendars. The tentative date right now, and there will be a sign up sheet going out. We're thinking next week, but it's Wednesday, November twenty ninth from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. We are planning on hosting that at the Hayward Veterans Center. Uh, just that we are, at least the Center for Land Use Education who's providing the training is anticipating that we have area available for up to 75 from other uh, districts that they, they've seen attend. So uh, tentatively again, Wednesday, November 29th, 3 to 6 p.m. at the Hayward Vet Center. Okay, I'll allow it, but generally we it's just board discussion. I'm sorry, quick question. Will that invitation go to the townships, please? And, and township zoning people? 
Perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll double check with, with Lynn. I don't think this is more focused around County, but I'll ask if that is to be available for, for town plan commission as well. Sure. I think it would be really important to yeah. include them because they're the um, beginning of the right. approval process. And I think they need to know the rules and regulations. Um, the only issue that I see is the capacity of the facility that they'd be using. If there's enough room for county and township, um, because the capacity of is right, because it's not again, it's not just for Sawyer County, it's the Northwest mm -hmm. District, which is Douglas, Bayfield, Ashland, Price, Taylor, Rusk, Washburn, mm -hmm. Burnett. That's our our district. Well, uh, and if we're be... inviting and opening that up to towns on top of other zoning and planning committees at a county level, that could get really big really quick okay i is think it it's a great idea Zoom? i think it's a great idea to maybe do a separate one for the town so we can look into that um i think you're asking him questions that he can't answer at this right. time so. i will email lynn markham for center of land use education and see what her thoughts are on that and i'll get back to you on that then thank Joel. you and another question um can we go to the board of adjustment meeting as well I don't see why not. Okay. Um, I mean, it is going to be focused more for those board of adjustments, but um, I don't see why not. So last night, Andy presented that. Andy, our administrative, um, uh, county administrator, county administrator, presented that meeting at the county board and brought the two dates and times. So you'd need to reach out to him on that. All right. If no further discussion, we are adjourned. Great.